Hey everyone, imagine you have a question or some interest. Most of the time, the data you want to analyze is already available in formats like text, CSV or Excel files, making it really easy to load into R and then run your scripts to get the results and answers you need. This is the best case. But what if the data is not as neatly compiled for you, but only exists on different locations of one or more websites? That's where web scraping comes in. And in this video, I'll show you how to do it using the RVEST package in R. We'll walk through four examples, each with increasing complexity. And I promise you won't need any HTML knowledge to get started. With a little help from ChatGPT, you'll see just how accessible web scraping can be. Let's dive in. The first example is not really web scraping, but a shortcut. So in case you come around a table on a website and you want to scrape this table and information and put it right into R, one way to do it is to just highlight every cell of the table, hold the mouse key until you reach the header and then press Ctrl C or right click and then copy the information. And in R, after installing the data pasta package, you will have an add-in where you can paste your clipboard as a data frame into R directly. And I wanna assign this information to an object then called Olympic medals. And I paste it as a data frame and it will come with this format where we now have the rank from one to 147 with the nation's column name followed by the number of games they participated in, and then the gold, silver, and bronze count, and the total of all the medals. The L just indicates that is an integer, and we see that Olympic medals was created as a data frame with character for the nations and integers for the other values, and that's a quick way to get data from the website when it's already in a table format. I will link to some tutorials from other YouTubers that talk about data pasta, because sometimes the tables have split columns and then it's not so easy to use. Also, it's just a few steps faster than copying the data into an Excel spreadsheet and then saving it and loading that into R. So for real web scraping, we need this package. It's pronounced harvest because we want to harvest the data from the website. We want to scrape it. And the first function we need is the read underscore HTML function that needs a string of a URL that links to a website. For example, a website that holds all the R packages in alphabetical order. And now we want to scrape this information from the website. So what happens if we just run this code and then look at the object we created? It tells us it's an HTML document and it comes with a head and a body. And this is because in 1490, Leonardo da Vinci created the HTML document and he decided it has to have a head and a body. Of course, this is just an attempt of a joke. But when you view your page, you see that the structure of the head and body is intact in this object. And now the question is, how do we access this? If you use str to investigate your page, you see that it's a list of two containing a node and then some document information. And it's even more confusing, but it means that the information is somewhere hidden in these nodes. And now I show you how to access it. Because on every website, you can press F12 to open this development tool. And now you see there's a head and a body. And when you click on this element inspector, you can hover over your web page and on the right, you will see which container you have selected. So we're interested in this blue container. And you now see that on the right, the table element is selected that then holds all these different packages. And this table object we can access with some more R code because now we can pipe the HTML page into the HTML node function. And this function is interested in an X pass that leads to the table object. So if we only run these lines, it found the table and it now has all this information, the package name available. And if we follow this up with the HTML table function, it will generate something that approaches a data frame or a table here with two columns, one with the name of the package and then one with the description. And you can see there are 21,170 rows with two columns. So quite many packages. And the only thing we would need to finish this table is to add the appropriate names and then remove rows that are an A. And these rows happen every time 
it switches the letter in the alphabet. So when it goes from A to B, there's a space holder row and we can remove that. So with the names package, we can assign name and description to our data frame. And then with NA omit, we remove all the rows that have at least one NA value in one of the columns. And now we lost 26 rows because of the first row being an A and then the 25 placeholders between the letters. And now we have name and description of our packages. So this was an easy example because there was just one table that we had to find with the HTML node function and then the HTML table function did the rest to clean that up for us. The next example is going to be a bit more complicated because now I'm scraping data from four different websites and the table is a bit more hidden, but we can identify it with the ID. So on this website, I was interested in the player squads for the European Championship. And again, we want to scrap this data. And by pressing F12, going into this elements view of your website, we pick the inspector function, but now it's a bit more complicated to figure out where exactly the table starts and stops. We see that this element covers it. So I click and now I can open this box class and see that it contains multiple things. And if we just move one element at a time down, at some point, it will cover the table we're interested in. Then we click the triangle again to open it. And here we arrive at an ID called YW1. And this is the ID we need to get this specific table. So after creating this reference data frame that holds four different URLs and an ID, I want to create a loop that goes through these four different websites and then scraps the table. And for the first round of this loop, I set I to one, which now means that our temporary URL will be this, getting the data from the Germany squad. Then we use read HTML again. And now the HTML node function has to lead to this ID that we just identified, and it will extract the data from this table. Now we see all the information was captured and that it will need quite a bit of cleanup, but at least it worked quickly. So you can see there are some duplicated names and the position is at different places, but this is because this table is not perfect in a data analysis sense because it has two rows and one column and then the HTML functions messed this up a little bit, but it can be saved, of course. So the first thing I did was I identified the columns that I don't actually need and I renamed them to one version of delete and I gave the others the appropriate name and then the select function from the tidyverse package, you can use this argument to unselect all the columns that contain this delete text. So now the temporary data frame already looks improved. We can filter out all the rows that are in A by checking that the name column actually contains a name. Everything else gets deleted. So after removing the columns and rows that we don't need, I want to add further information for the loop. So based on the reference data frame, I will take the ith value from the code and country column to add this information to the final table and if this is the first loop and i equals one i create this euro 24 permanent table that holds the information of this temp df and then in each of the following loop rounds when i is bigger than one i will just bind the new temporary data frame for spain italy and france to the already existing one and this is how we can add more rows to the final table so now when we start the loop, it will go through the different websites, extracting the tables, combining them, and then we end up with the data for Germany, Spain, Italy, and France. And as you can see, it wasn't much code needed. And then R does the work for us compiling this information that you can then use for analysis. I want to finish with an example where we have to build the URL within the loop. And we want to extract information that's not in a table, but sits at different nodes. And this is where we have to use ChatGPT. In my last video, I analyzed the top 1000 ranked school communities that you can see on the discovery page of school. And I wanted to extract the title of the community, the description, the status, whether it's private or public, the number of members and the current subscription price. This means that we press F12 again and then hover over the tile that we're interested in. And when we arrive at this grid of different 
discovery cards. We can open it again for more details. And now we see that it highlights the digital growth community and we can simply right click on it and copy the element. And then we go to ChatGPT and copy paste the element. It's not much code. And we say this is an element of one community and it will immediately start to uncover the different information that's present in these different nodes or classes. So before I copied in this information, I gave it the URL from the first discovery page and I told it that there are 30 different cards with different status and member numbers cost per month. So ChatGPT tells you how to read the whole page. And then with the additional information of one of these cards, it is able to detect the different classes that hold this kind of information. And it gives you a script where it will go through the first page and then use the HTML notes function with this specific node identifier. And after reading the node, it uses the HTML text function to extract the text. And at the end, it combines this different information into a data frame and it explains to you what it does. And if you praise ChatGPT a little bit after trying the code for yourself, it will come up with additional information where it tells you that if you want to scrape data from multiple pages, your base URL is now a placeholder and you need lists that will hold information from page one, two, three, four, etc. And now the loop dynamically builds a URL by adding the page number one, two, three, or four to this extra URL variable. And the data it extracts will be put in these lists. Square brackets are used to identify list positions. So the first item of community names will hold all the 30 community names from page one. And then it continues with description and meta information. And after it loops through the second, third, fourth, and fifth page, it will now convert these lists into plain vectors. So now ranking will hold five times 30 information of the rankings vector and we will have five times 30 names unlisted in one long vector of 150 community names. Then you can copy this code into R running the script. You get this data 150 entries as I said. In theory you could go through all of the 34 pages to get to the first 1000 communities and then I even used are to extract this information that's hidden now in the meta column. For example, I told it that there is multiple information hidden in meta separated by this character combination. And then it found the separate function where it takes one column and then splits the information into three columns. I want to warn you that sometimes ChatGPT makes mistakes because when I first asked it to turn 25.2k into its numeric value, it got the point wrong. It ignored it and just added a thousand for k. So then you have to find this mistake and it will come up with a better function function using the case when function and then detecting if there's a k you just remove it and add a thousand otherwise you can turn it into a number right away and in the end this worked perfectly 6k became 6000 712 stays 712 etc and that's how I created my last video where I analyzed the top thousand communities. One more point about these dynamic URLs. These variables like page, there are often more of them. For example, if I in discovery search for a term like painting, I get different communities. And if I move to the second page, you now see that this combines different variables. The first one is always added with the question mark and then all other variables follow with a ampersand. So this end symbol and you will get to the same page regardless of the order. So now I moved page to the end and I started with the question and this will shift us here. So when you want to scrape the discovery page over multiple pages by different search terms because you want to see how many different academies exist or painting related communities, this is how you could loop through different instances of search terms and pages. But one warning, most websites detect unusual traffic on their sites because it can slow down the servers and they don't want to limit the user experience of the other users. So you have to be careful to not to get blocked. So limit your web scraping to only a few pages and search terms at a time to get the data you need for your analysis. I hope now you understand how ChatGPT can help you to scrape data from the web. If you have any more questions, post them in the comments below. Until next time here at the Data Digest.